is what holds people back. And when there's no fear of Allah in the heart, Allah fills it with the fear of everything else. Iman did something else as significant if not more. You see, yesterday they were shackled by all types of fears. And I read a beautiful statement recently. It's all the success you want is on the other side of fear. So you yourselves, others, you're stuck in an unhappy job because of fear. You're stuck uh, in, an, in a bad situation because of fear. Fear is what holds people, holds back. people back. And when there's no fear of Allah in the heart, Allah fills it with the fear of everything, the fear else. Of everything else. Remember that. Remember that. If the heart is not filled with the fear of Allah, Allah fills it with the fear of everything else. So you're afraid of sickness, so you take insurance and you become afraid of losing your job. You take job security insurance and you're afraid of your mortgage. You know, so do you understand me? It's a life. You wake up fear, 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 fear. And then superstitions come, you know, you walk under a ladder, oh my God, what happened? I walked under a ladder, let's walk a few times this way. Do you get me? That was their lives. A life filled with fear and superstitions and shackled by false gods and false ideas. And Iman came and released them from it all. And released them from it all. And they became what I call superhumans. superhumans. Like you look at the Sahaba and the challenges they faced and the obstacles they conquered, a normal human can't do it. Should I give you some examples? Here I'll give you one. This is the Battle of Muta. And the Prophet وسلم, has sent these people uh, the first way, Zayd ibn Haritha and Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Instructions, listen, Zayd is in charge. If he falls, Ja'far will take the reins. If Ja'far falls, Abdullah ibn Rawaha will take the reins. If Abdullah ibn Rawaha falls, then choose a leader from yourselves. War is a scary concept. Allah save one and all, Ya Rabbi. Now, war, if two equals are fighting, is problematic. Now, these Muslims were sent to odds you cannot imagine. Like, the Prophet wasallam sent a few thousand. And although historians differ, but one sum is that 150,000 came out against them. One sum. And they went there against Arab tribes, but the Roman legions came instead you know from Rome so can you imagine fear like that like imagine you're surrounded by 10 people and in a dark alley it's a problem but these people are facing like a unsurmountable odds and you would think they would go pale you know nervous shake worry, panic. Um, you won't find it. Like it's as though they didn't know fear existed. You know, this is the second commander, uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. So the first one, Zaid fell. So Ja'far holds the standard and gallops into the enemy. And then he thinks in difficulty the horse might run back. So he jumped off and hamstrung the horse. And then he, the, this is heard on battlefield him saying, Oh Jannah. Like in, in battlefield, like you should be scared against odds. Instead, you're going, Ya habbath al-jannati waqtirabuha. 
all the beauty and delight of Jannah and how close you are. Like just beyond this, I am in Jannah. Do you understand? Like where he should be scared and nervous. But do you see what Iman does? It made the obstacles of this life nothing. Nothing. And then he is not the isolated one. So you know how they struck him. His right, uh, his, uh, his right hand got cut. So he held the standard with his left hand. So they cut off his left hand. So he held it like that. And then they stabbed him through. Uh, and as he's falling, the, 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 the standard's about to fall. So they get it and they say, where's Abdullah ibn Rawaha? So Abdullah ibn Rawaha, who was the third commander in charge, he's, uh, uh, his cousin has just given him a piece of bone with a bit of meat on it. Like, here, have a bite. Uh, and he's, he's having this in the standard camp. Um, and for a second he tarried. You know, for a second. Like he's, you know. And then he says this to himself and they hear him. Ya nafsu ma laki takrahin al maut. O soul, why are you afraid of death? Illa tuqtali tamuti. Hadha hiyadu al mauti qad saliti. Wa ma tamannayti faqad laqiti. What are you afraid of? That this is what you were seeking. And you know what you desire is just in front of you. Then he tells himself, uh, like, you know, uh, oh, my soul, unless you know you die here, you will die somewhere else. So go face your destiny. And he galloped into it. And the Prophet وسلم, is narrating the story to the Sahaba uh, in Medina, like miles away. But my point is, difficulties like that where you would, would have thought they would break it had no effect on them. why because of the power of iman so iman gave them the strength to succumb all types of odds uh, and this is just fear hunger camp um, and they, they overcame acute hunger. You know the stories. The Prophet Sallallahu is in the battle of Khandaq. And the Sahaba says, I saw, you know, it reached a time, hunger was so bad that they, everyone was tying rocks on their bellies. Do you know why? They call it gastric bypass these days. You know, where they put a sleeve on the stomach to make it tight. Uh, but they used to put rocks to tie it so it you know, uh, becomes smaller, shrinks, and then they don't feel hungry. So then they reach the level, like, you know, if you're still working with a rock on your stomach, morale's pretty low. Like, you, you know, if it was here, it's smoke all time, you know, like, everyone's, everyone's tired. So uh, these ones, they started to compare size of rocks. Who's got the biggest rock? And they looked at the Prophet وسلم, three rocks on his blessed stomach because he's that hungry. Yet they're still working. And not only that, you hear this in the ranks, like in the Muslim ranks. Allahumma lawla anta mahtadayna wa la tasaddaqna wa la sallayna fa anzil allahumma sakinatan alayna wa thabbit aqdamana illa qayna O Allah, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been guided, we wouldn't know salah and we wouldn't know zakah, so make our feet firm when we meet our enemy and, and support us and strengthen us. Um, morale is high. But what's, what's their secret? Because it's not food. Nor is it equipment. Nor is it situation like they're not in a cinema, you know, and not a small army. At this stage, Muslims of 1,400 fighting men. 10,000 plus have come against them. You know, annihilation. And in those days, they would come and attack your house and take your women and children and your boys would be their slaves and your women would be their toys. Uh, those days. And, and they can see all that. Like at the verge of annihilation, but their belief and their confidence and their iman and their fearlessness at such a level that it has set them free from the shackles that everyone else is shackled by. So the second outcome of iman is that it sets you free from the chains that shackles all the rest of humankind.